and everyone. If you would join us in uh, musical worship, you can stand if you would like. I just wanted to share this morning that I've been reading the passages outlined in the bookmark from your bulletin, which have been really encouraging. If you haven't done those, I really encourage you to uh, take a look at those uh, during your quiet times or other times. Um, just spoke about the Holy Spirit a lot, and we've been learning about Jesus, and it is a holy God and holy Jesus who we serve, and he also calls us to be holy in our conduct and to live according to the Spirit, uh, which is a high calling, but he promises us, us to be with us wherever we go. The same Spirit that, in Romans it tells us, the same Spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead also dwells in us. So as we sing these first couple songs, just uh, I invite you to, to sing to him and praise and ask for that Holy Spirit to be really present in your life this morning and moving forward this week. the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord. holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Experience the glory of your 
You may be seated. Let's pray for our offering. Lord, we worship you with our voices. We worship you with our hearts. We worship you with our bodies. And we worship you with our resources. We just ask that um, you would give us cheerful and generous hearts and that you would use these resources to build your kingdom here. In Jesus' name, amen.
if you'll stand and sing the doxology with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You guys can take a seat. Unless you are a kiddo, in which case we invite you to stand on up and join the uh, children's volunteers in the back for the special kids lessons that we have this morning. So thank you to, to all the youngins for being a part of our family and uh, for those who give their time and, and help and have special lessons for them. Uh, I just wanted to first of all say good morning church. Uh, it's always helpful when we get together, even as we sing, to be reminded of why we sing, to be reminded of what we're doing as we get here. We're all coming from different places in life. We have different things going on in our lives, um, but we yearn for the presence of the Lord. We um, want to grow and have the Spirit lead us and uh, be grown more like Christ as we are reminded of Him in His Word. So let's never lose sight of that, but uh, a couple more things not to lose sight of as we move forward. Uh, we got stuff going on. We've got uh, Operation Christmas Child. We've got the holiday season coming up. We've got community groups still happening. Um, so check out the bulletin uh, if you ever want more info on the, the different things going on in the life of this church. Um, a few quick things to highlight. The, the poinsettias that we're ordering uh, to um, be a memory of those that we love and to help decorate the church. Uh, those orders are actually due today. So if you've been planning on ordering one, um, you're going to have to do that right after the service to make sure that we can um, send those in for the orders for Cape Charles Christian uh, to support that school and also um, support our church as we remember our loved ones. So that's new today. Operation Christmas Child, the um, collection week starts tomorrow. So if you've still been wanting to do it, still haven't had a chance to do it, you can get by on a technicality, technically, according to the Eastern Shore Post, the last collection day in Exmoor is the Monday following from now. So you could drop it off next Sunday, but that is the very final last week to do it. Uh, but we'd encourage you to um, pack those shoe boxes. It's not a, just a way of giving kids stuff around the world. It's a way of helping share the gospel with them, uh, helping disciple them, and those shoe boxes are just sort of an open door, an opportunity for that. Um, so do check that out if you haven't already. Uh, we do have the church lunch a week from this Sunday, so please sign up on your way out for things you might want to bring, and also something that's not on here, but we're still very excited. We do have some baptisms happening. Uh, Jordan is going to be baptized next week, and we're really excited to support him as a church family in that as we close out this series on the basics of the faith. We'll have some more coming up in December, um, but we would love if you can be there and just show uh, your love to him and the body of Christ and any others who will be joining them for that day as well. Um, I think that's everything. Uh, believe it or not, though, we are actually almost done in this series that we've been doing on the basics of the faith. And no matter where we're coming from, we wanted to grow in our understanding of the core teachings of Scripture. No matter where we're coming from, we wanted to build our lives on these cornerstones more to... to see our world through these realities more. Uh, we've heard about the Bible, we've heard about the Trinity, uh, sin, Jesus, salvation, and now there's just two more. Uh, today we talk about the Christian life, and then next week we talk about the future. And I know uh, a sermon on the Christian life sounds a lot more like a practical how-to guide than a crash course on the basics of what we believe. But at least for me, maybe for you too, uh, I've come across so many different Christian environments and churches, and I've heard so many different stories, and this basic belief about what life with Jesus should look like now has always had huge, huge consequences. I remember in college, 
uh, there was this church that some friends went to, and, uh, you know, that church was great about being honest about our sin and how much we need Jesus. That church would always remind the people who went there how much we fall short of God's holiness, how much we need the gospel, and that was great. But when it came to the Christian life, it's like they taught that growth didn't even happen. It, like you were just stuck in that sin until Jesus comes back. Like you never get away from that defeat. And if you feel like you're having victory in your life over sin, then man, you just mean, you're just missing how much you've really failed. I remembered those friends coming back on Sundays. It's like the life and the joy was just sucked out of them. It's like they really were stuck. But it all came back to what they were being taught about the Christian life. And on the other end of the spectrum, I remember friends going to churches that only sang the life is great songs. You know, that harped so much on the heavenly joys of having the Holy Spirit work, working in your life, which is great, but those churches didn't even have a category for times that felt awful or sad or, or dry or difficult. And it just made those friends who went there feel like the Christian life was on some other planet. Like, they could never have it. It didn't matter. It didn't match with how hard and how sad life really was for them. Now, what about you? Can you think of examples of this? Can you think of examples with you or people you know where, where your core beliefs about the Christian life have had such a huge impact? What we're getting at with today is what do we expect from the Christian life after we turn to Christ? What does that look like? What does it feel like? Do we expect too much or, or too little? Do we think of it the wrong way? Let's stop guessing. Let's stop coasting on the autopilot of what we're used to. Let's let God himself tell us what it's like, what that life can be like, what it should be like after we turn to Christ. So let's pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, we do want to reclaim these basics of the faith in our life. Lord, we want to see the world around us the way you do. We want to grow our daily walk with you, our conversations with people, according to what you show us. And um, Lord, right now with the Christian life, we're in the middle of it. We're doing this right now. We're living it Monday to Saturday on top of today. And uh, it's not easy. It's not always something we understand well or feels like it's working and matching. And so we just pray that this morning we would just look to you and your word and hear from you and get guidance on how to grow, how to live this life with Jesus after we've turned to him. Lord, we can't do that on our own, and so we just ask for your Holy Spirit to be at work at us, even now, as we hear, and even now as we, we look to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what do we expect from the Christian life after we turn to Christ? Well, this morning is going to sound just a little bit different than usual. Um, since our beliefs about the Christian life are so broad, I mean, they, they're covering anything from, from how we think of the Holy Spirit's work in our life to, to what we think the role of a church really is, to pretty much everything, right? We don't want to get lost in the forest of this. So we're going to be hearing from even more passages in Scripture than usual. We're going to listen to more verses read out loud. I just want us to of soak in what God's word shows us that experience of growing in Jesus is really like. And when we're not soaking in the Bible verses today, we're just going to keep it really simple about the basics of what we're expecting from the Christian life. When I was growing up, I was sort of involved in this thing called 4-H. Anyone here of 4-H, that program? I see more nods than head raises. That's okay. I can take that too. Well, this morning, uh, you're going to get 3-H instead. Okay, 
So 3H, simple way to remember. After you turn to Jesus, life gets harder. You get holier. And the gospel gets higher. Uh, I never really think of myself as a three-point sermon kind of guy, but it works with this one. So 3H, right? Life gets harder. You get holier. And the gospel gets higher. So let's start soaking in some scripture. Uh, if you've got a Bible, it's great. You can turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You can just bro- grab one of the pew Bibles around you too. This one is going to be on um, page 1000 and... Oh, I've got too many sticky notes. 1024. Page 1024. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And be starting in verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Now we have this treasure in clay jars, so that this extraordinary power may be from God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry the death of Jesus in our body, so that the life of Jesus may also be displayed in our body. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that Jesus' life may also be displayed in our mortal flesh. We could jump down to verse 16 for a second. Therefore we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. Life gets harder, you get holier, and the gospel gets higher. It's pretty striking in this passage to realize how amazing this life in Jesus is. But then to hear scripture say that treasure that you have is experienced in clay, messy jars. That's you. That's your life. Afflicted, persecuted, struck down, carrying the death of Jesus in your body. Life gets harder not easier after you turn to Christ. Look with me at another one here. We're going to go to Romans chapter 4. So flip some pages backwards. This is going to be on page 1000. Page 1000. Romans chapter 5, excuse me. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions. Because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character. And proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. We build our hope, our anticipation of what Christ is yet to come and finish. The gospel gets higher in our minds, higher in our hopes, higher on our priority lists the longer that we live as a Jesus follower. We get holier. There's endurance and character that gets produced in our lives, this says. But where does it say that starts? What is the expected default that starts that chain reaction in these verses? Our afflictions. Our afflictions are what produce endurance, which produces character and so forth. Life gets harder. Life gets harder. Jump just a few chapters ahead with me in Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 18. It says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay and to the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. Not only that, but we ourselves, who have the Spirit as the first fruits, we groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. There is a glorious future ahead that will make the suffering of today feel like a little blip on the timeline. But while we are living in that blip now, it's a life of groaning inside of ourselves. You would think that it would say something like, you know, everyone on earth is groaning, but because the Holy Spirit is working in us, we groan a little bit less, right? We at least have a little bit more excitement about how things are going. But that's not what it says. It says, we who have the Spirit as the first fruits, we groan along with the created world because we're waiting for that redemption to finally run its course in full. Life gets harder. Now think about these passages that we're soaking in. Why is it that life gets harder after we're joined with Jesus? Is it just some kind of like divine hazing? Like initiation? You know, or the Father just decides to crank up the suffering dials in our lives for the people that he's forgiven through Jesus because you know, he's still a little mad about their sins? Well, that's not how the Bible talks about life getting harder as a Jesus follower, No. Life gets harder because of the sins that we used to tolerate, we now fight against in the power of the Holy Spirit. And fighting is a lot more taxing than just sitting on the couch. Life gets harder because we make a lot of sacrifices in order to care and help our brothers and sisters in Christ. We put up with a lot of inconveniences, to say the least, in order to reach the lost with the good news of Jesus. Life gets harder because we no longer fit the mold of our surrounding cultures and we stick out like a sore thumb. We get mocked. We get excluded. Anyone been there? We get treated like the party poopers, the weirdos, the people that the unbelieving world would rather just disappear or shut up or something. Life gets harder because the easy parts of life don't matter as much to us as Jesus matters to us. And so when it comes down to choosing between a long life of 80 years or a promotion at work or just tuning out all the cries for help versus staying faithful to Jesus, we side with Jesus every time. And life gets harder. We may experience victory over sin in our lives, but life does not get easier. Life gets harder. Is that what you believe? Not in like a people should pity me kind of a way. Not in a bitter grumbling kind of a way, but in a hey, I know this comes with the territory kind of a way. Do you expect that after turning to Christ? And the more that you do that, that life gets harder. Are you able to groan along with creation? Are you able to boast in your afflictions Are you able to let the clay jar show off the power of God? When life gets harder, do you jump to the conclusion that something's either wrong with you or wrong with God? Do you think of the hardships that you experience as a follower of Christ? And I'm not just talking about your air conditioning breaking down. I'm talking about when you suffer for and suffer from knowing Jesus. Do you think of that as an obstacle to your growth? Or do you think of it as the soil of your growth, the place where it happens? 
this is what you expect. Life gets harder. But if that's the only H in the 3H, then man, we're, <laughs> we're going to have a tough time getting through it. And that's why that growth is still part of what we expect. It's not just that we trudge around in muddy soil. It's that we see the fruit of the Holy Spirit come out of that. Life gets harder, but you get holier. You get holier. Let's soak in some more scripture. Turn with me to John chapter 15. I really should have labeled these. John chapter 15, verse 4. John 15, verse 4. This is on page 958, by the way. Page 958. John 15, verse 4. Jesus is is talking to his disciples. He says, Remain in me, and I in you, just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine. Neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, right? Flashback to last week. The one who remains in me, and I in him, produces much fruit, because you can do nothing without me. Look at verse 8. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit, and prove to be my disciples. Now friends, it's no coincidence that the Lord, out of all the analogies that he could have used to talk about our maturing holiness. He didn't talk about profits. He didn't talk about workout gains. He didn't talk about cherries on top. He talked about fruit. Fruit is just the natural byproduct of of being a certain kind of tree. Jesus says that if salvation happens by being united to me, then, then being connected to me will produce fruit in your life. The way that branches from a vine produce fruit just by being connected to the vine. And then right after that in verse 9, Jesus says that remaining in his love looks like keeping his commands, our joy being complete. So yeah, life gets harder. The father is the gardener, verse 1 says. He prunes every branch that does produce fruit so that it will produce more fruit. Life gets harder, but you get holier. You become more like Jesus. You show more of the fruit of being united to him in your life the longer your life goes on. Listen to the Bible's prayer for the Philippians in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, this is on page 1040. Page 1040. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. The letter starts out, I give thanks to my God for my every remembrance of you, always praying with joy for all of you in my every prayer because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 9. This is what he prays. I pray this, that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment so that you may approve the things that are superior and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Listen to just one more. Flip a few pages. Just the next page to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. What does the Apostle Paul have as a goal for his ministry in this church? Listen to this. Verse 28. We proclaim him, that's Jesus, warning and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. I labor for this, striving with his strength that he works powerfully in me, it says. Life gets harder. You get holier. And this is the part of the Jesus follower's life that is prone 
to so many misunderstandings, so many manipulations. We start looking around at the people around us and we say, ha, I'm so much holier than they are. I'm such a better disciple. We start looking around at the people around us and we say, ah, they're way holier than I am. I, I must not even be a real disciple to begin with. Life gets harder. We can understand that. We experience that. But you get holier, and that's the part we like to twist. We're prone to wonder. We run after for the wrong reasons, or we refuse to run after it at all. So what can help keep us from, from twisting the you get holier part of your Christian life? Well, that's where we remember the last H. The reason you look more like Jesus the longer that you're connected to him, is not because you move further away from what he's done for you. It's because you dig your roots further in. As the gospel gets higher, your life gets harder and you get holier. The gospel gets higher. It gets higher in its glory and grandeur, higher on your priority list, higher in how high you lift it up as something of importance for you. And when we're talking about the gospel, what that word means, it's just the good news of Jesus. It's who he is. It's what he's done for us. It's the reality of our sin, the, the grace of his forgiveness, the power of his victory over death. I mean, you get the idea. To use the words of our community group book that we were looking at, the gospel is not just the door. It's the path that we are to walk every day in the Christian life. Listen to the way that the letter of the Colossians starts out, just verses earlier in, in verse 3. We thank God always, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. For we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. You have already heard about this hope in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Get this. It is bearing fruit and growing all over the world just as it has among you since the day you heard it and came to truly appreciate God's grace. All right, remember what we were just talking about with that growing holier, bearing more fruit? What is it Colossians says is bearing fruit? It's the gospel, right? It's not just the door we get in with. It's where we stay. It's where we walk. It's how we grow. You don't start out needing Jesus and then need him less and less over time. You don't start out with the Holy Spirit transforming you and then take it from there and go on your own. Life gets harder and you get holier because the gospel gets higher. You grow in your understanding of how holy God is. And as that happens, you're growing in your understanding of how much you are not, how much you miss the mark. And when those things come together, who Jesus is, the good news of what he's done, becomes bigger and better, more important, more beautiful in your life over time. The gospel gets higher. I know this morning is a little broad. I know we're hearing from a lot of different scriptures, but it's good to just recenter on the basics of what we're expecting from the Christian life. It's good to let Scripture guide us in this. To have something like the 3H that you can always go back to in your walk with Jesus. When you start hearing people on the radio, like Joel Olstein, saying that being a Christian is about being freed from unhappiness, being freed from poverty, being freed from hardship, that that's what the Christian life is all about. You just go back to the 3H. You say, no. Life doesn't get perfect and rich. Life gets harder. Life gets harder. When you surround yourself with people who say they're following Jesus, but then they're telling you that you can live however you want, that they can live however they want, they can think however they want, all you have to do is just do the right Jesus ritual things, and that's all he cares about. You, know, you go back to the 3-H and you say, no, I don't just go further off on my own path. I get holier. I, I, I grow in Jesus as I'm connected to him. When you start out depending on Jesus, but then it feels like your church or your family or someone is trying to get you to just start dependent on your own accomplishments and the rules that you don't break, 
Like, Jesus has done his part when you got converted at summer camp, and, and, and now it's time to move on. You say, no, you go back to the three H's. You say, the gospel isn't something that I just look at through my rearview mirror. It's what ranks higher, what I lift higher, what brings me higher the long that I, longer I live with Jesus. So you can go back to this in your conversations with non-Christians, too to help you in your witness. When they dismiss Jesus' followers for having rose-colored glasses, or when they're mad at churches in one breath for, for being just as mean as everybody else, but then in the next breath they're mad for churches having a holier-than-thou attitude, right? You can go back to the three H. You can say, life gets harder, actually. Because life being easy isn't what being a Christian is about. We get holier and the gospel gets higher. They both go together. So just process this in your own life. Which of the three H's was the most important reminder for you this morning? Which part do you struggle with accepting or understanding? Is it the life gets harder part? The you get holier? The gospel gets higher? Which one is it for you? Talk about that with a friend from here or a family member or just if you don't have one around, you can just call me. Our beliefs about what the Christian life should look like, how it should feel, how it should work, it has a big impact on your life. So let's reclaim what Scripture teaches us about that growth, about our, our sanctification. Even as life gets hard, even when it seems to get harder and harder, we can stay rooted in the good news of Jesus. We can give Him the glory while he makes us more like him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know there's a lot that we, uh, we could have covered that we didn't look at. So many more verses, so many more ways you care for us and guide us in what this is meant to look like. And Lord, we know that all of this <laughs> Like Courtney mentioned at the start, is this life can only happen because of the Holy Spirit freeing us, empowering us to, to love you, to live out your commands, to walk in step with you. So Lord, we just pray that you would remind us this morning, even if it sounds simple, that you would remind us that life gets harder following Jesus that we get holier following Jesus and that the gospel keeps getting higher as we follow him. Lord, I pray that that would be a, a, a cornerstone, a bedrock to come back to in our lives when things get confusing, when things get hard. And we just praise you for um, giving us not just a door, but a path to walk on. And we give you all the glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we'd like to invite you as one last way of responding to what we heard to um, stand and sing and to pray together with our voices in our hearts that the Lord would make us more like Him as we, as we walk with Him. And as always, um, you know, if you're here and something in the sermon really struck a chord with you and you really want prayer, you want really want someone to walk with you and turn to Jesus, um, the deacons and I are always up front if you want to come forward and, and pray with us. We'll be singing more like you. As Andrew speaks about becoming holier, I think about the, the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. And we'll be singing about patience, gentleness, kindness in this next song, More Like You.
That's our prayer this morning as we recenter on our beliefs about our Christian life. Just that the Lord, as more we grow with Him, would make us more like Him in our walk with Him and in our conversations with Him. Um, thank you for joining us and being a part of doing that together as we look at God's Word together. And be sure to check out the stuff we have going on on the way out and join us for uh, the baptism next week and the lunch as well. But thank you and go in peace.